This is part three of the plant notes. This is about um, plant development and germination and um, responses. So when plants develop, they develop from, uh, when we're talking mostly, I guess, here about flowering plants and gymnast plants as well, that mostly flowering plants. Um, you, uh, the zygote is in the seed, and it's, it's the seed with the cotyledons in the embryo. The cotyledons are the seed leaves that have the nourishment for the um, for the in growing embryo. Um, the ovary is a fruit that encloses the seed. <coughs> And in monocots, the endosperm, which is produced from that double fertilization, provides food to the growing embryo and stays usually stays underground. In dicots, the endosperm food is found in the cotyledons, the first seed, seed leaves. And in most dicots, these are the first leaves that appear above ground um, that nourish the growing embryo until it has a chance to start uh, undergoing photosynthesis and feeding itself. Germination occurs because water gets in the seed, and then when that happens, enzymes in the, that present in the seed activate the growth. The radical, which is the first root, emerges, and that's the beginning of the germination process. Here we have uh, a picture showing the germination of a monocot. You do not need to worry about all the terms here. This is just showing you that you've got all these different parts in the seed. You've got the endosperm here, which nourishes the growing embryo. The cotyledon is the first leaf there. Um, and you've got uh, monocots, mono, mono means one, and that means they have one cotyledon, so they have one seed leaf there. And then as it grows, the radical grows down, and the, and the cotyledon grows up. The coleoptile it shows here, and then the first leaf appears above ground, but the endosperm and the cotyledon part remains underground. <coughs> here you have the primary root to form that's going to eventually become that um, fibrous root structure that you see in monocots. In dicot germination, it's a little bit different. In the dicot embryo, you've actually got two seed leaves, okay, two little leaves here. The cotyledon is the big part of the seed. Here, this is showing the bean seed, and um, <clears throat> and that's the, the first leaves that are going to appear when it breaks out of the seed coat. Um, you see the seed coat breaking the ground, it falls off there, and then the cotyledons are, bit, are here, and they're nourishing the first true leaves of the first plant as it's developing those first tree leaves that can then undergo photosynthesis. As the food is used up in the cotyledons, they wither and fall off here at the bottom of the plant. And then you end up with your primary taproot with the secondary root coming off of that <coughs> in the dicot germination. Um, now, tropisms are responses of plants. They, plants do respond, even though they don't get up and walk around, they do have motions that occur. And we will look at some of these in class, or I will give you an assignment on the computer that shows you some of the various kinds of tropisms or movements that plants undergo. They're uh, <clears throat> in response to stimulus of some kind, and um, they occur as a result of hormones that affect the growth of the plant. The three main kinds of tropisms are phototropism, which is a response to light, sigmotropism, which is a response to touch, and gravitropism, which is a response to gravity. There are several different kinds of responses within each of these types <coughs> that are called different things, uh, you know, mastic movements and and um, and so photoperiodism and things like that. But these are the main groups of responses. Here we have some pictures showing you what happens here. Okay, this is just showing phototropism, <coughs> and it says these molecules are distributed evenly in the shoot, but when the sunlight shines on it, they move to the far side and they increase the elongation of the stem on that side, which then makes it curve toward light. And it happens relatively quickly. <coughs> Over the course of a day, some, a lot of plants move uh, in response just in the course of a few hours to the presence of the light on one side or the other. When you leave a house plant growing in your house, uh, always face the same direction toward the window, what's going to happen is the plant's going to end up leaning one way, which is why with house plants it's really important that you continue to turn the plant gradually <coughs> a quarter turn every few days or so to keep it to keep it all uh, developing the same way around the whole plant. <coughs> Here we have a thigmotropism example. This is a Venus flytrap and it and it moves in response to these guard hairs being touched and we'll look at some videos of how that works. But if, a, if an insect or something touches two of these little hairs within a short period of time, it causes these leaves to clamp shut and trap the insect inside. <coughs> and then 
um, digestive enzymes are um, released here to digest the, the insect and break down its parts to release to produce some of the provide some of the nitrogen compounds that are absent from the soil in which this particular plant grows. Other plants develop another stigmatism is the development of tendrils that some plants have that wrap around structures to help keep them aloft. Uh, this helps them um, stay aloft in uh, windy conditions and things like that rather than getting blown all over the place. A lot of vines have these kinds of tendrils that go on. And then you have gravitarchism, which is a response to gravity. If you are growing your plant <coughs> and you turn the plant pot on the side, the stems are still going to grow up and the roots are still going to grow down. Um, this is called a negative response to gravity, where if the roots grow down, it would be a positive response. And this is kind of what we're looking for in our seed germination um, lab that we have ongoing in class, where we're looking at the seeds planted in different directions to see if we can see the tropisms that occur um, as a result of the seeds growing. Now, there are several different kinds of plant hormones. Uh, I'm not going to require you to know all of these, but you do need to know a little bit about them. Uh, auxins are hormones that are involved in elongation of the stems and they are important in the phototropism and gra gravitropism, the growth patterns that occur as a result of that. <coughs> Cytokinins are hormones that are involved in the growth of roots and in germination of seeds um, in new plants. If there are plants that can grow that vegetatively reproduce uh, work by cuttings rather than just having to have seeds. Gibberellins are also involved in germination, but they're uh, also they're uh, largely involved with making plants get bigger. So when you when you expose plants to gibberellin hormones, you're getting bigger flowers, bigger fruits, and so forth like that. They're really active in bud, bud development and elongation of the stem. And then finally, ethylene, which is not really a hormone but a but a gas, a, an organic gas that's produced, is a gas that helps fruits to ripen. If you buy fruits that are not fully ripened yet, a lot of times you can put them in a brown paper bag on the counter in the kitchen and they will continue to ripen as a result of the ethylene gas that they produce that can be trapped inside the brown bag. <coughs> and this helps, this helps fruits uh, ripen that have been picked too early. This concludes the notes on plants. Um, we will, other things about plants that we will cover in class that are not in the notes will be covered in worksheets that we do and in labs.